Hello and welcome to the third video of this gameplay ability system setup. This video is creating an attribute set. I'm Thomas M. This is an Unreal Engine tutorial. Thanks for joining us and we will jump right back into it with creating our attribute set. So, as we mentioned a little bit in the last video, attributes are fancy stats that have a couple extra little decorators with them to help you create your ability-centric game a little bit easier. So, to create an attribute set, we need to create the attribute set class. So we're going to right-click in our C++ classes in the project name folder. Mine is GAS tut, yours might be something different. And we're going to create a new C++ class. We're going to hit show all classes and look for an attribute set. There it is. And we're going to call this player attributes. All right, so I made a mistake here. I left Visual Studio open while I created my C++ class, and that's fine, technically. It's something that you are able to do, like it won't crash. Now I have found that if I try to reference this class somewhere in a blueprint in my project after I just created and hot reloaded it, I'm gonna come up with two versions of it, one of them being a redirector, and it's gonna be messy and make some issues with my project down the road. So in order to fix this, before I touch anything, I'm gonna close the project, and then I'm gonna close Visual Studio, and I'm gonna reopen the project from inside of the file explorer. Now, in order to get around this, the way that I found that works is you just close Visual Studio when you go to create your C++ classes. It solves all of the problems. So now that our engine's back up, I'm gonna open up Player Attributes, and this is gonna give us a C++ file. So let's jump over to playerattributes.h, header file here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to declare our attribute data as U properties. These are public U properties. We're going to make a subcategory called stats. We're going to edit these anywhere, and we're going to make them blueprint read because we want. You'll see later that we won't actually adjust these using blueprints, not directly. We'll be using gameplay effects. You'll see it as it comes up. So these are the type of gameplay attribute data, and I'm just gonna make three basic ones. We're gonna do speed, then health, and then a damage mod to give us the basic things to interact with. So we've got three stats to mess with when we do our damage execution and things, and then we'll do actual damage on weapons when we create weapons. And then speed will interact with the actual character stats using a passive ability. So we'll get to that in just a moment as well. Now we need to create some U functions for each one of them. Make a new category called attribute functions. So these return F gameplay attribute and they are the name of the attribute. So my attribute speed and then the keyword attribute and that is the name of the function. So go ahead and save. So now we're going to save the header file. We just need to define these functions. So if your IntelliSense is caught up, you can just hit create definition and control period, create definition. So we need a static view property. All right, so what this is doing is, because this function is looking for the speed attribute, not the speed value, but the attribute itself. So we're looking for the U property that is speed. Basically, we're just searching through the static class U player attributes, looking for this attribute to see whether or not it's been instantiated, whether it's on the class at all. And we're going to return, and it has to be static. So now that we have our attributes, we're going to pop back over into Unreal and recompile. Okay, so now we have attributes and we have functions to read them. So the next thing we're going to want to do is initialize our attribute set. And the way that we're going to do this is by creating a spreadsheet. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop into Google and I'm going to create a Google Sheets. So we're gonna call this spreadsheet player attributes and we'll call this sheets base values, all right? And in order to use attributes, you need to use these exact headers exactly as I will type them. 
However you format it doesn't matter, because it will be exporting as a comma separated value sheet. So it won't get any of the extra spaces or anything like that. So the first category is name, followed by base value, then min value, max value, then derived attribute info, and b can stack. All right, so most of these are pretty self-explanatory. The name is the name of the attribute. So the syntax here is we want the name of our attribute set first. Okay, player attributes, we also have the C++ class. So I'm just going to copy player attributes and make sure that I spell it correctly. Player attributes dot, and then the attribute property name, so speed. And then these are pretty self-explanatory. Base value is what does it start at? So the default Unreal character has a base speed of 600. We'll give you a minimum speed of, we'll say 150. So we have, or we'll say 75. We'll let you go really slow. And then we'll give you like 1200. You can double it. Um, now derived attribute info is, is kind of funny. If you look at the documentation currently from Unreal, they don't tell you anything of what this is. They just leave it blank in all of their examples. But if you look out here, all we get in that description of what these attributes are is actually a bunch of question marks because whoever created this doc worked for Epic and didn't work for the company that originally created this system and nobody actually knows what this is for anymore. We just know that it needs to be there for this spreadsheet to work. And if you put anything into it, it will probably break. So there you have it. So can stack is whether or not you can have multiple instances of this attribute. I can't personally figure out why we would have multiple instances of an attribute stacked on top of each other, but apparently it's, it's useful for something. I have found just setting it false across the board is pretty much good. So say health, we are gonna start with 100, minimum value of zero, so we don't go below zero, and then we'll have a maximum value of say 1,000, let you overcharge health if you can. Our damage mod, we'll say by default is one, it has to be a minimum of one. See, I'm thinking of this as a damage multiplier, so when the player has a weapon, the weapon deals a certain amount of damage, and then the player's strength or ability to use the weapon multiplies the damage by some value. So it has to be at least one because you don't want it to be zero or anything negative because that doesn't make any sense. And you don't want it to be too insanely high, I suppose. The health rate is pretty high. So we'll call it a hundred. Now we have some realistic looking values here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna download this spreadsheet as a CSV. The other reason I like using Google Sheets is it's free. It's always an advantage, especially for tutorials and things. When... So we're gonna navigate to our content folder and realize we don't have any folders that make sense here. So let's go back to the Unreal project and we're gonna create a folder for our attributes. And then back in Google. And we're gonna save this in that new attributes folder. And because I changed the sheet name and everything, now I have this nice name that I can just hit save and pop back into Unreal. You should get this message box automatically. If you don't, then you probably put it in the wrong spot. You wanna import this as a data table and the row type is attribute metadata. Hit okay. And then we'll pop it open and we'll see We've got gameplay attribute here, base value, minimum value, max value, can stack. We can see that this is definitely working how it's supposed to. So this is how it's supposed to look. So now we know that our attribute table is set up just fine. Now we need to add a property in our character in order to own these attributes on the character themselves. So let's go to our character header file and we're gonna declare a public key property. I called mine ATER table data table because I don't like writing attributes a million times. It's a very long word. And then somewhere in our begin play function that we created down here, after we create our ability system, we want to make sure that it created correctly. 
understand that we have an attribute data table. So we're going to declare a constant attribute set. So we need to include our player attributes file in our header file. All right, so we are initializing the stats in our ability system um, by feeding it in the class of our attributes and the data table with the starting data. Pretty straightforward. Oops. So then we save that, jump back over to Unreal, and compile. All right, and now we need to open up our third-person CPP in the content folder. So we need our blueprint class for this guy. So either we can click on him and go back to the hierarchy like we did last time, but just to show you multiple ways to do things. You can go to the content folder, third person CPP, blueprints, and then open up the character this way. And then in here we're going to search for our abilities. And see we have an attribute data table. This new row right here. Click the drop down. You should only have one value in here with a CS view sheet we just put in. So we'll go ahead and pop that in there. And now our player has attributes. So before we test whether or not any of this worked, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here and we're going to pick it up in the next video where we are verifying attribute data. So tune in. I'll see you in video four.